Anybody home? Anybody home? What do you want? Are you the new owner? What do you want? My name's Christopher Cobb. Yours? Adam. I run the stage line that comes into Koala. I don't travel this stage. Well, I wasn't trying to sell you a ticket. You see, we're growing fast, and we need horses for our coaches. I've got none for sale. Yes, but you do have some of the best grazing land in the country. I'd like to try to work out a lease arrangement to use this as a breeding ranch for our horses. Hey, clear out, you! Go on! I'm gonna watch him every minute. Lanky sent you, eh? Lanky? A solicitor. Is something he cooked up with the owner? No, no, I don't know him. Well, then you clear out. I think you'd better let me talk to the new owner right now. He's not here. But when he gets here, I'm going to get rid of him, too. Yes, Mr. Cobb. The new owner, Mr. Joe Acton, should have been here some ten days past. He wrote from Sydney to say he was staying there to make some purchases, including a complete new wardrobe. New wardrobe? Well, I'm afraid Mr. Acton hasn't a true picture of circumstances here. He's due in on today's stage. Well, speaking of circumstances, what about this man, Adam? Well, I gather he didn't like your proposition. No. Adam doesn't respond well to change. He's a little odd. But he's kept the place up since old Mrs. Carter's death. Do you know her very well? Well, I handled all her legal matters for 35 years. Well, then Joe Acton is what, her grandson? Grand nephew. I don't know too much about him. There's no direct line since the death of Neil and the boy he adopted. Neil? Mrs. Carter's son. He was killed seven years ago. The old lady never quite recovered after that. I suggest we go and meet my client. All right. You spoke about Neil's adopted boy. Yes, Ian. The day Neil died, the boy took the bush, ran away. Ran away? Well, how did Neil die? Oh, it was an accident. A, a gun discharged and... Ah, Mrs. Armstrong, I haven't forgotten about you. I'll see you later this afternoon. And they never found any trace of the boy? There was a search, but a natural boy, alone and on foot in midsummer in this country? Drought. Thousands of cattle died that year. So Mrs. Carter willed everything to Acton instead of this boy, Ian? No. After her death, we had to get a judicial declaration of presumption of the boy's death. I carried the case to the Supreme Court of New South Wales myself. And after seven years, he was declared legally dead. Yes, and the property passed to Mr. Acton. He was definitely to be on today's stage. Lionel, there was supposed to be a Mr. Joe Acton on the stage today. Anybody like that on your manifest? I'm Joe Ann Acton. Miss Acton? I'm Harold Denke. How do you do? Uh, I hope you had a pleasant journey. Yes. Of course, experienced dressmakers are very hard to find in Sydney. Of course. Uh, Miss Acton, may I present Mr. Christopher Cobb? Uh, Mr. Cobb owns the stage line. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Acton. As soon as you get settled, there's a little something I'd like to discuss with you. You see, we need good grazing land to breed coach... I'm sorry, Mr. Cobb. I don't intend to enter trade. But I would appreciate it if you'd drive me to the estate as soon as possible. You're uh, going out to the estate, too? <laughs> uh, yes, of course. All right, madam, if you do us the honor of staying right where you are, we'll be underway, Mr. Linky. Right. Okay, Lionel. down there, just beyond that hill. There's a very good well, and... Uh, Do you mean to tell me that this is all there is to it? As far as the buildings are concerned, yes. 
50,000 acres. And that's the men house. Well, this is Australia, not England, Miss Acton. Think of what I gave up for this. What did you give up? Alfred, for one. Alfred? He was going to be head one day. He's bright. His lordship had his eye on Alfred. But you gave him up. Oh, Mum made me when Mr. Lanky wrote. Because it wouldn't fit my new position to be married to a groom. Well, what was your old position? I was upstairs maid. Well, you are now the owner of 50,000 acres of the finest grazing land in Australia. Good day to you, Adam. Uh, who's this? This is Miss Joanne Acton, the new owner. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to see inside the house. Are there no servants? No one but him? No need for anyone. All the horses were sold after Mrs. Carter's death. In fact, then you've still got property that most people in England and America give their right eye to have. It's just that I don't know how to tell my family, Mr. Cobb. I expected so much. Is that my great aunt? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. What's this? That's the gun that killed Neil Carter. What? There are three bedrooms and a good-sized kitchen. Let me show you the rest of the house. when you'd be along, Mr. Cobb. Mr. Lanky was out to see me this morning. Yes. And he told me that, uh, that you weren't interested in leasing, but just selling. Yes. With the money, I can buy my family a good home. Not what they expected, certainly, but at least enough to be comfortable. And Alfred? That's over. Still not suitable to your position. I made it very definite when I told him. Well, Mr. Lanky and I worked out an amount that we think is fair. Yes, he told me. You know, my wildest dreams a year ago, I never imagined that much money. Yet I felt cheated and disappointed. I guess we none of us know how lucky we really are. Well, people who do can never be cheated, Joe. You know, I'm beginning to understand what people see in this country. It's a wild and... Open and untamed? Well, it is a big country, and it is wild. Kind of like America, people leaving the cities to strike out across the plains in search of a new life. I'm beginning to like it here. Do you like it well enough to stay? I don't know. I almost think so. And yet, I suppose I should be sensible. Mm-hmm. We should be sensible. And then, of course, there's Alfred. There you are, Mr. Cobb. I'll get my things together and move out as soon as Mr. Lanky can arrange a passage back. There isn't any hurry, Joe. It'll be a while before I can start moving horses in. Well, I mean, I have to buy horses and then I have when to When are move... things done, Mr. Cobb? It's done. Well, Mr. Cobb, it's all yours now. Look, Joe. Good day. You 
seem to like horses a lot. What's your name? Malumba. Well, Malumba, I'm going to be bringing a lot of horses in here. I'll need help, people to work with them. You live around here? That's my place. I don't understand, Mr. Cobbler. As she's tying this bill of sale, everything is in order. Well, that's not what I asked. I want to know about Neil Carter. Was his son legally adopted? I don't see how that concerns you. Well, I do. If that boy Ian should turn up, both Joe Acton's inheritance and my bill of sale would be worthless. But I don't think that's possible, Mr. Cobb. We waited the required seven years. The Supreme Court of New South Wales has certified the boy legally dead. Yes, but what would happen if he turned up? Well, Mr. Cobb, that would be a bit, um, sticky. Mm -hmm. now, you said Neil was killed in a shooting accident. Who was responsible? I, uh, I wasn't there, so I don't know. Well, it seems odd that an eight-year-old boy just ran over the bush. Well, you see, Mr. Cobb, Neil Carter adopted an aboriginal boy. Well, could he have gone back to his tribe? Yes, but that summer, whole tribes of aborigines died when the water holes dried up. The boy wouldn't have had a chance. No, I don't agree. Surely you don't believe the boy to be still alive? Well, Mr. Linky, in your own words, I think it's a little bit sticky. You... You clear out! Go on out! Now, just a minute. I brought him here. Well, he's got no business here. He's been hanging about here for months, waiting a chance to steal something. I think we better go inside. Come on, Malobus. The law says it's your property. How long have you known? I haven't. Then why were you so anxious to get rid of him? Well, I thought it was possible, but I didn't know. I don't know yet. Grandmother. Are you sure now? It was a pet name he used for her. Ian. Ian. Do you remember that name? Why did you come here? Who, who told you? I come home. How'd you know where your home was? Not know. I walked this way, then find. Thought I heard voices. Mr. Carter. Miss Acton, I'd like you to meet Ian Carter. Ian Carter? He's dead. Yeah, that's what Mr. Lenke thought. But he made it back to his tribe, north of the Hawker. But if this is Ian... That's right, it changes quite a few things. Chris, may I speak to you a moment, please, outside? Chris? Mm -hmm. Surely you don't believe this boy is Ian? Yes. Yes, I do. Of course, the petition will have to be made to the Supreme Court to reverse the presumption of death order. Oh, but they can't. I've just sold it. Well, that has nothing to do with the law, Joe. Chris, you can't do this to me. I've already written to my family saying I'm coming home with the money. Well, I'm not trying well, to do anything against you. Anyway, what would he do with this place? Look at him. He doesn't even know how to live in a house. Well, then he'll have to learn. Very popular pattern, Mr. Cobb. I think you might like that. Mm -hmm. Now let's try the plain one. Right. Here, Ian. Oh. <laughs> here, put an arm in here. That's right. Turn around. The other arm goes in here. That's right. Like that. And then you see you've got all of these buttons to do up. Take a little getting used to, but here, take a look at yourself in the mirror. Come on. Good. I like. <laughs> you like, huh? And you've got a lot of time to make up for, Ian. You've got to go to school, learn to read and write. There are an awful lot of things to learn. Learn ride horse? Well, you can do that, too, but that's generally done after school. I like horse. 
The school doesn't teach only the things you like, you know. No go school, only want to learn horse. Well, you have to go to school. Look, these scars from the initiation ceremony, you like those? Hurt. Did you cry? Woman cry. Well, that's it, they hurt you. But you went through with the ceremony because it made you a man. Well, that's the same thing you do with school. Let's see if we can fit them in a pair of boots, huh? Yes, Mr. Cobb. Just a moment. What is it? What right she got to run you off? There's no use discussing it. It's his place. But it's doing no favor to the boy or anybody else. He'd be happier in the bush. You, know, you close him up in four walls like this, and they die like any other wild animal. They can't stand captivity. I'll take care of him. It's too late. There's nothing can be done. I can let him know what he's in for. He'll hop it soon enough. Not now. Too many people know about him. But if they can't find him, that's all there is to it. You couldn't frighten him away all those months he was waiting here. I'll be through in a moment. You can take me to town in the backboard. That's all I need to know. It may be necessary for the boy to appear in Sydney. Well, I think that's fine. It's about time he and had a look at civilization. Give him a chance to understand what he's going to school for. Just what is your interest in this, Mr. Cobb? I don't know. It just sort of happened to me. But I would like the court to grant me a lease on the property with the money to be put in a trust fund for Ian. He seems to love horses, and I thought that maybe he could work with us after school to getting practical experience as well as money to run the place in the future. That's very generous, Mr. Cobb. Oh, that's good business, Mr. Linky. Adam must be taking this very much to heart. <laughs> well, he's not exactly enthusiastic about Ian. The claim Neil only adopted him to do Adam out of a share of the property. Why shouldn't he have a share? Adam is Neil's brother. He was specifically excluded from the will. Well, why was he excluded? Please, go horses now. Oh, all right, Ian, you run across to the stage office. I've got a couple of things to settle with Mr. Lanky. I go. Adam was Neil's brother. Got it, lad. You'll do fine. Good. It's all right. I got a present for you. Go on, take it. From your cousin. She wants you to have it. She give me true present? A true present. Go on, ride him, hey? Here we are. Go on, put your foot in the stirrup and hop out. It's easy. Yeah. Now he's all yours. Now go on, see how he goes. Good. I'll ride. My fault. I didn't realize what Adam meant when he said he was going to frighten that boy away. 
Miss Acton, what's the matter? Adam took the gun and brought a horse for Ian. Adam? Well, what was he trying to do, lure him out of town? So he could use the gun, the same gun. What do you mean? Mrs. Carter hushed it up, but I think everyone here is convinced that Adam Carter killed his brother. Paul, saddle my horse. I'll get a rifle. Chris, I'm coming with you. Adam! Adam, what do you think you're doing? He was stealing one of your horses, Mr. Cobb. That's a lie. You gave it to him. I should... I should have killed him the first time I saw him. Like I killed Neil. Now will you tell me why you brought me here? Know you, sir. Well, I'm pleased to know you, Alfred. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> We've got a lot of work to do. We're bringing in the brood mares tomorrow. We've got fences to mend and a whole lot of things. Ian here will give you a hand if he can spare the time from school. I spare. You're Ian, the horse lover. Me too. It's a fine team that brought us out, Mr. Cobb. Best I've seen since I left Devon. Well, thanks, Alfred, but they're not quite good enough. We've got to have the best teams in the world. We will, Mr. Cobb. We will. <laughs> 